So we finished the 3028 light mech review here with the classic mech. We're, we're looking at the Mech Warrior mechs, classically putting them on the table, working our way through Tactica. And uh, this will complete the light mech entries. I'm pushing all of these up onto my YouTube channel under the Battletech playlist. And then we're going to jump into the mediums. The urban mech. Is there a mech that is more well known? Is there a mech that one takes it's not the best mech out there it has some shortcomings but it is solid if it can work literally in an urban environment but i consider this mech an auto include just for the lulls if you get taken to the ranks of the dispossessed by an urban mech then that's that's worth the price of admission and, and the low battle value so right away what we see with the urban mech and and this is true of every single mech weight class you know in this case we're just looking at lights based on the tonnage and what you can bring to the table, and light mechs don't have a lot of tonnage, obviously being light, there's there's like a checklist. They should do this. They should excel at this. They should be good at this. There should be multiple entries. And if you break that that guideline, there better be a good reason for it. You know, light mechs need to have speed. They need to have mobility. They need to have jump. If I'm going to break that and bring something special to the table... Previously, we talked about a good example with the Spider versus the Panther. The Panther breaks that a little bit because it, it has a PPC. So Urban Mech, what it brings to the table, it doesn't have speed. It is one of the slowest mechs in the game. All right, well, hey, slowest mech in the game, it's an Assault Mech. Or slowest unit in the game, the Behemoth Heavy Tank has the same speed as the urban mech but you're like well it's a hundred ton tank it has so many weapons on it it will pulp any type of mech i mean clanners even like worry about the behemoth tank it's so slow because it makes an ogre tank look like baby cakes now we see this on a light mech really really slow with the fact that to keep it alive you have to rely on speed so right away the urban mech starts to break this mold and and we need to be aware of it two three two Two walk, three run. So right away, not much of a difference right there. Usually you see like uh, the spider, eight, 12, walk, run. Two, three, two, two jump. Okay, at least it has some jump capabilities. Although one could make an argument playing some variants, dropping that jump and, and just going all in on armor. But uh, the jump does have, it's that get out of that tight spot if possible. Although I could argue and say if guns are drawn on an urban mech, you've got a lot of trouble. So how does this mech play? We don't have speed, which means this is something that wants to take up position. It's a defensive mech. I don't want to be caught out in the open. I want to have, uh, obviously, city tech, city fight, urban fight is best, where I can be sandwiched between two buildings, have a clear lane of fire, maybe even get some cover from one of those buildings, a partial plus one or something, and just rattle off that auto cannon 10 constantly, every turn, AC 10, AC 10, AC 10, just, just sending down, um, down the table to your end, limiting the avenues of attack. So positioning becomes important. And with that regard, tactically, we don't have the speed to like run around everywhere and try and catch up. So when you play the urban mech, and when you play defensive mechs, you need to look ahead of time and say, okay, take a guess, and the guess can be influenced by Tactica to, to narrow it down, based on the mission, based on the terrain, based on what's happening, where do I think my opponent is going to be? Where do I think they're going to go? If we're recovering some lost tech or a downed pilot that's in the middle of a city hanging out in the Central Park area, then I know mid-game, everyone's going to be making a run for it. So send Urban Mech up there ahead of time, get into position and wait. Or if I know, hey, everyone's going to grab this this objective and then run, send Urban Mech to a place where it can have uh, an overwatch or a lane of fire to shoot as people are moving away, as mechs are moving away, as tanks are moving away. So figuring out where the battle is going to be. Get into place and start shooting, shooting, and shooting. In terms of that, the Autocannon 10 is pretty decent. 10 damage on a light mech is very, very solid. You know, most light mech primary weapons are medium lasers. So you're doing five points of damage. You've got good range. You've got enough ammo to last you the battle. Secondary weapon, you've got the small laser. 
okay, better than nothing, but primarily we're going to be plinking away with that auto cannon. The Urban Mech works in tandem with a lance. It works in tandem with other units to the point where you've got other things going on that your opponent has to deal with. Either you're using some tanks aggressively or hovers aggressively if it's part of a, that type of conventional uh, ground force. So you have to deal with my hovers and you have to deal with my other stuff. And urban mech is just like, again, every turn, firing, 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 firing. Or potentially you've got other mechs running around that your opponent is aware of the urban mech, but they have bigger problems to deal with it. Um, here's a great example from a recent game. I got my urban mech. Fritz always plays the Urbi. I, I got to play it for the lulls. And a lot of times I play the AC20 variant for even greater lulls, you know, lulls plus one. But I also do regularly play the, the stock variant. I got this urban mech into position, the Duke of Death. And he's got a lane of fire, uh, city fight, urban fight, city tech, over a couple of buildings, way in the distance. So, I, so I've got a good firing vector. I run my Victor up there. I also love playing a Victor. And I'm skirmishing. I'm skirmishing back and forth with a Grasshopper. I'm trying to get that AC-20 in range. Grasshopper is trying to blitz me with um, the lasers. We jump up on a building. So I, I know what my opponent was thinking where... If he jumps with the grasshopper up on the building, I'm going to see this as I can jump up there with my Victor, get point blank. I'm going to try and take that autocannon 20 point blank. Anytime you're in a city fight environment, you jump up on a building. Now, other units will have potentially some line of sight, you know, lower units and tanks and things like that. Well, that opened up the urban mech right away. So we skirmish there. Irby just starts firing on the grasshopper, firing on the grasshopper. We jump down uh, on the building. We're fighting. We're moving. Now the grasshopper and my Victor, they're, they're engaged, right? We're, we're engaged. We're going back and forth. And we can't really disengage. And the urban mech just had a perfect position just sitting there firing away every single turn. I missed a few, but I also hit a good amount. And, and again, having that auto cannon 10... Even on a heavy mech, that's that's not some damage that you necessarily want to ignore or or can ignore. Not that you want to ignore a medium laser, five points, or a large laser, but 10. 10 has that bite. So building your tactic a checklist and realizing urban mech does work very well, but you need to be in that, that narrow range band. Because um, even with the armor, and, and it has very good armor for a light mech, it does... It, it still does not leave much room for mistakes. And if we can approach it from that perspective, uh, it does offer a lot of tactical value on the tabletop.